ladies and gentlemen, BMI President and CEO, Mike O'Neill. everyone. How you guys doing? All right. Man, it's always good to be back with all of you, and I look forward to this every year. I think you know it's great to catch up with old friends, meet some new friends, have some drinks, eat some food, and just be together again to celebrate a fantastic partnership with the NAB. It's also a fantastic opportunity for BMI to highlight some of the amazing songwriters that we have the great good fortune to represent. And tonight, you guys are in for a real treat. Our honoree, our honoree defines what it means to be a living legend. John Fogarty is responsible for some of the best known, most beloved, and distinctive rock songs of the 20th century. He has wowed crowds at Woodstock. He has sold over a hundred million records. He's been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and the Songwriters Hall of Fame, and it doesn't get better than that. You all know John took the music scene by storm back in the 60s as a lead vocalist, lead guitarist, and primary songwriter for the iconic band Creedence Clearwater Revival. His creativity was limitless, and he forged this unique sound by blending blues, rock, roots, country. That, along with his unique voice, his gritty, soulful voice, just captivated millions of fans. Hits like Proud Mary, Fortunate Son, Have You Ever Seen the Rain, and Bad Moon Rising became immediate anthems and remain monster hits today, not only on radio, but on streaming services. In fact, Have You Ever Seen the Rain just hit over a billion streams on Spotify. <laughs> Fortunate Son will top the billion streams this summer on Spotify. That's a testament to the timeless power of what John's been able to do. And of course, John's as famous as a solo artist as he is for his work with CCR. Just a few of his solo hits include Old Man Down the Road, Traveling Van, and Center Field, which made him the only musician to ever be inducted into the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame. Just this past, in, in 2021, John released his first new original solo music in eight years. The heart-wrenching song, we were talking about it at the table, Weeping in the Promised Land. It's a tribute to those who were affected by the pandemic and those who suffered through prejudice and injustice with a look towards the future and brighter days ahead. That's John's way. He's authentic, he speaks the truth, and he's always been a voice for supporting what's right. You know, we're very proud at BMI to honor John as an icon back in 2010. We've also presented him with 15 millionaire certificates recognizing songs that have surpassed one million plays on radio. Now, those songs are well beyond one million. Collectively, those 15 songs have achieved over 63 million performances on radio. Now you're clapping, but let me put that in context for a second. A radio station would have to play those 15 songs back to back with no commercials 
for over 375 years to hit 63 million spins. It's amazing. <laughs> Truly incredible. John, there's no stopping. Next up for John, of course, he's playing gigs across the U.S. and Europe with his celebration tour and his sons. Tyler and Shane will be joining him on the road. And in August, John's heading out with the headlining, I'm sorry, the Outlaw Music Festival with Willie Nelson. I'm sure we all can't wait to see it. But also tonight, I found out that on Thursday, John and Julie will be celebrating their 32nd wedding anniversary. John, you've been a driving force behind one of America's greatest rock bands, and you've had a solo career that's second to none. My friend, you've solidified your place in history as one of the preeminent songwriters of our time, and all of us in this room, we're just all the luckier for it. We're here to have a rockin' good time and just let loose, so let it go, man. <laughs> Shit! 
Ladies and gentlemen, John Fogarty. On behalf of the BMI Board of Directors, we salute you with our deepest gratitude of all your exceptional contributions to the world of music. We are honored to present you with the BMI Board of Directors Award. Well, thank you so much. Uh, well, thank you so much. It, it is an honor to be here. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you, Mike. Um, gosh, I'm kind of humbled about the whole thing. I know I uh, could hardly eat my dinner. I was so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, uh, gee, I got a few things to say. I, I hope it's all right if I take a minute. Uh, first of all, I know that you are all here because you love music, every one of you. Uh, and, it, you know, and it, you sh you grew up and figured out a way somewhere or another to be attached to music, and I feel the same way. Um, very happy to be here at BMI. You know, I think I first noticed BMI, and it's probably the reason I'm standing here on a little Richard record <laughs> in the 50s. It was probably Rip It Up or Ready Teddy, uh, and I said, what's this BMI thing? I've got to figure out what that is. Well. As a kid, I was about 10 years old, I began the, maybe you guys, well, you probably know this subliminally, BMI basically represented rock and roll, and that's where I wanted to be. So uh, I grew up and kind of did some things myself. Um, not sure why I, I brought this, but uh, way back in 19, 
67, I got off active duty with the military. That was the summer of love, by the way, and I did live in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, I just had been writing songs in my own little kind of kid way for years, but it was always sort of hapdash. And so I decided now that I was a man and had been in the army and now I was gonna make a, a go at this music thing, I should get more organized with my songwriting. So I went down to the local drugstore and I bought this binder, put some paper in it. I wasn't quite sure what I was gonna do with it. It's just I knew I wanted to be more organized. Well, a little bit of time went by. I mean, a day or two or maybe four. And then a, a phrase came into my mind and it was the words, Proud Mary. And I didn't know what it meant, but I knew I should write it down. So I went over to my notebook and it was the very first thing that I wrote in this notebook all those years ago. Um, I'm only bringing that up because I went on to write a whole bunch of other things in this book. But a few months later, not, not that week, or you know, this was somewhere in September of 67, somewhere along ju about June of 68, I got my honorable discharge from the Army. <laughs> that may have a little bit different ring to it these days, but in the height of the Vietnam War, if you were 22 years old, that was a real nice thing to have happen. <laughs> I spun a little. <clears throat> and also, I, I had done my duty, so it was like, you know, and by the way, um, don't get me wrong, I'm an American and a patriot, but if I had had to go to Canada, I sure would have thought about it real deeply <laughs> in those days. But anyway, um, I was so happy about this transcending moment, I, t I spun a little cartwheel on the little patch of grass that was in front of my apartment house. And then I ran in, in the apartment there, the house, grabbed my guitar and started writing. And suddenly these words, left a good job in the city, came out of me. Well, guess what that good job I was talking about leaving. <laughs> Anyhow, I sat there with my guitar and I was fussing over these words and finally came up with, ro yeah, rolling, rolling on the, re wow, I like that, this is kind of cool. What is this thing? And I looked in my little notebook and there right in front of me it said, Proud Mary. Remember, this is about eight months after I had written it down. And I said, Proud Mary. Oh, that sounds like a boat. That could be the name of a boat. So I guess what I'm trying to tell you is some forces, meaning God, I believe were guiding me through the whole process. It took kind of a long time for it to develop a bit like this story. But <laughs> anyway, uh, finally I wrote the song and the process for the very first time with that book in front of me. The, the process worked and I made a complete song and I was a pretty happy camper. I would pass the book around and let it, you all look at it, but I've lost it a couple of times, and that, that scared me to death, and I ain't going through that again. <laughs> anyway, um, thank you all for having me here tonight. Uh, the other thing I would like to say about this uh, song book, which is kind of my soul, if you think about it, it's been with me for 50 some odd years, um, quite recently, maybe some of you don't know this part, I finally retained the uh, majority ownership in those songs that I wrote back in the day. It took an awful long time, and I, I want to give my beautiful bride, Julie, uh, all the credit because she was the one that manifested it, and her persistence and absolutely not taking no for an answer because we heard no a million times. They're not for sale, you're never gonna get them. Ha, ha, ha. Well, I lived long enough, I outsmarted all of them, and I got them.
Did I tell you that I love my beautiful wife and we've been married for 30 some odd years now? Thank you, honey. Because you all should know that uh, she's my rock. That's all there is to it. She's the one that makes it go in our family. I think some of you guys appreciate what I'm saying there. Um, so this summer, for the very first time, and also right here on this stage, I'm going to get to perform these songs for the first time, owning them. So thank you very much. Right now, I guess I'm going to call my kids up here. This is Tyler and Shane, my sons, who play in my band. And we're going to perform a little bit for you. Some 
I should tell you that the boys have their own band. Uh, besides playing in my band, uh, which they've been doing for several years now, they have a, their own band called Hardy Har. They play kind of psychedelic rock, I guess you'd call it. And uh, since I'm standing in front of a uh, whole bunch of radio and record people, I would like to... You know, it's a busy world out there, and anything you can do to help my kids, I sure would love that. confess to y'all that uh, uh, well, if I was you, I would be very envious because I get to stand up here and play music with my own kids and it's the greatest thing in the whole world. Thank you, God. Well, we got one more for you. Guess which one? <laughs> uh, I do want to thank you all for all the help you've given me and my career and my family, of course, over the years. I do appreciate every good thing that has come my way, and I just want to th say thank you to you all from the bottom of my heart. God bless you. Good job in the city Working for the man every night and day And I never lost a minute of thieving Playing by the way things might have been A big wheel will keep on turning Power never keep on going Clean 
got a place in Memphis to pump a lot of pain down New Orleans. But I never saw a good side of a city till I hit the ride on a riverboat queen. Big wheel keep on trying to pound, mama, keep on mine. Well, if you come down to the river, well, bet you're gonna find some people who live. Well, you don't have to worry, cause you have no money. People on the river happy to give. We'll keep on joining. I'm gonna keep on going. Rolling, rolling, rolling on the river. She rolling, rolling, rolling on the river. Thank you all very much. So thank you so much. That was wonderful. <laughs> Didn't you. everybody enjoy this? This was awesome. This was awesome. So we really appreciate it, and thank you for being a BMI songwriter. Well, thanks for having me. I've loved it all these years and many more years. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. <laughs>